Welcome to practice. This is a Katona-inspired practice, and we're going to be working next to the wall today. So if you don't have a wall that is available to you, it's no problem. All of this can be done in the center of the room. But if you have the wall, move up against it because you're going to get some really cool stability and support from the wall. And it's a way in which essentially you can give yourself assists that I would be giving you if I was sitting in the room with you. And this is so powerful because we can learn to start to um, be safe with ourselves. We can learn to be the magician who has control over our mind and our body and our breath. The difference between luck and a magician is technique. And we want to have a lot of techniques in our pocket that are well developed, right? Like the rabbit doesn't just appear out of the hat, the magician put it there and he refined a technique to be able to pull it out and wow you at the magic show. This is the difference. So if you wanna be a magician, we have to do things again and again and again. We have to learn how to fit ourselves because while we are not necessarily intended to fit everyone else or other people, we are meant to fit ourselves. Your knees fit in your armpits. Your palms fit on your heels. You are created in sacred geometry. All geometry is sacred and all life is made up of geometry. So you fit yourself. Your ears are the same size as your kidneys. A whole bunch of other of these types of fits are in the body. And the more that we can learn to find that, we get connection to ourselves, we get the sort of plug in a socket which gives circuitry, right? You put a plug in a wall and electricity starts moving. It's the same kind of idea in our bodies. And we use a ton of metaphor in these discussions because we're not flat and we need a lot of metaphor to describe something as complex as a human life and a human body. So in this practice, we'll talk about body as origami, that you, know, you have a two-dimensional piece of paper, but you get to be the mediator and the genius and fold it up into a boat or a party hat. And the body is a house. We need to learn to live in it really well and to clean our house and tend our fires and make sure the plumbing is working. But body, we don't just live in it, we go somewhere. It's a house that travels, so body is a vehicle. Body is an instrument, and we wanna learn to tune our instrument well so that we can play well with others. So we use all of these layers of metaphor and meaning to enrich our experience, and we discard the ones that don't necessarily quite fit for us. The first piece of this that's so important that I alluded to already when we talked about origami is that if we want to make a cup that holds water, we need to have a good frame. A frame is always four walls, right? A walled-in garden is paradise. So we need to be organized well in our frame and our structure. And when we do that, then we're able to find really clean folds in the hip and in other parts of our body so that we have a strong foundation because everything is predicated upon everything else. A fractal tells us a whole bunch about the whole. To put that another way, um, the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And so we want to use the entirety of ourselves really, really well. And that's what this practice is about. It's about upping your function so you can up your longevity, cleaning your house, keeping your fires tended, keeping your waters flowing, and so you don't get overheated, learning how to give the right amount of effort and then to open up and receive grace. So let's begin by organizing ourselves on a spit. So elevate your pelvis up on top of a block. You can sit in Sukhasana like I am or in Varasana with your heels outside of your hips. Make sure that your pelvic floor is pointing straight down because then you have a plug and a socket, a connection to the earth and the sutra atman, the spine is free to lift and rise and then close your eyes. And straight away, attune your hearing to your breathing and start to find a smooth and steady breath. Breath is the first to come and the last to go. It's a way in which we can control our minds, it gives us a focal point for our attention. Breath always reflects the subconscious mind, and likewise, we can impact the subconscious mind with the breath. You can self-soothe, so attune your hearing to your breathing, to that sound that soothes the soul. And then take the tip of your tongue to the place where you would say the word life, the top, middle of the palate. Open up the thread of your imagination, beginning to use all of yourself. And we'll start by just creating a frame and opening up the windows of this house. So take your opposite palm to your opposite elbow. 
And eventually this will fit. It might not today, but do your best. And then armpits towards your heart. And now inhale as you open up the window, lift your frame up right alongside of your two ears and exhale as you close the window and keep going in and X, in, X, in, X. It's virtue of the frame, of the structure that allows us to have a window to open and close or a drawer to open and shut. So when we create frames in our structure, we're more formidable, there's more integrity in the structure, and we are less likely to disintegrate. So make this frame really, really clear. It's when we have good boundaries that we are ready and available for expansive and unconditional love. So open your windows as you inhale, exhale as you lower. And know that every single time that your arms are up in the air like this, you are in your second nature. You're in the ground of doing. You are in your consciousness, your capacity. And it's really, we are safe when we're competent. So we are building competency by doing the same practices again and again and again and again, by returning to the same breath work again and again and again, refining that vision, having a revolution by having lots of revelations, going around in revolutions and having a revelation both ways, right? So in, X, in, X, in, X. And we don't breathe until we're bored, and we don't breathe until we're exhausted. We do it to a count. So when I practice this way on my own, I usually do about 25 breaths here, and let's take 10 more. Nine. Three, two, and one, lower your arms down, and then take them back up in that frame and really organize yourself in the frame. So pull opposite shoulder to opposite elbow, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, and organize yourself. Wrap your armpits towards your heart. And then inhale, turn your head to the left. This is the east, the direction of the sun rising. And exhale, turn your head to the right, where dusk is and the sun sets. And continue in that way, nice and steady. Inhale to the left and exhale to the right. And imagine yourself rising with the sun in the east and traveling past noon at your sternum and exhaling over to dusk on the right. We wanna to learn to own the night and seize the day and we can play with that polarity in our bodies and recognize again and again that uh, the sun doesn't rise and the sun doesn't set, but we rise and we set and the planet spins and so we don't want to take that for granted. We can choose to operate any time of day as we wish. One more time. Good, lower your arms down. Bring your hands to your knees if you're able to fit or your hands to your heels if you're in Varasana so that you have a ball and a mitt, a hand and a glove, you're fitting yourself. And then start to inhale up the back body, fire rising. This is your vigilance and your effort. And exhale, water down the front, make yourself ready and available and willing and receive grace. So breathe around yourself. This is the breath of effort and grace, fire and water. We need to make effort if we wanna go forward in life, but we also need to make ourselves available to receive what is freely given. So breathe around yourself, grace and effort, fire and water. Very good, and now take your arms up into the shape of a V, symbol of an equilateral triangle for strength, structure, and stability. Make cups in your palms, again, so you can receive the grace that is freely given. Lift your chest, lift your throat for Kapalabhati breathing. Take a nice deep breath in and start pumping away. <laughs> And once again, because our arms are up in the air, we are in our capacity and our scholastic nature, we're in our conscious selves, our secondary selves, and here we are lighting our fire. So we're turning on the pilot light in the house and we are flushing the heat upwards. We have opened a window and we're fanning the flames, heating ourselves up. It's important to know how to heat your fires up and then we don't wanna leave them burning too much and burn ourselves out, so we need to learn how to cool ourselves down. So keep pumping and pumping and pumping away. When I do this at home, it's usually about 100 breaths. <laughs> Inhale, hook your thumbs over your head. 
Hold your breath, sip in a little more air, and rain your circumstances down around you. And then go forward and back. Inhale, take your pubic bone forward. Exhale as you go back. In, X, in, X. Again, the pelvic floor is the match. Earth is a giant striker. So here we are lighting a match. We're kicking our own butt. This is a technique that is always really, really good if there is stiffness in the lower back or if you're feeling lethargic. And again, now because our hands are down on our knees, it's important to know what you're playing with. The game that you're playing right now is to be in your ground of being, in your stability, in your lower body, in your embodiment. So move forward and back and forward and back and forward and back, playing with the endocrine system, with your hormones. And then pause in the center, take a deep breath in. And a long breath out. And now circle around yourself to the right. And move in the direction of time, direction of the spin of the planet. And now we're in the kidneys, which are your inheritance, your stock, your waters. We're gonna work with that a lot today. This is how you flush yourself. It's the toilet system of the body. So you need a good, good functioning kidneys. It affects your hearing. So you wanna have good acoustics, hear what's going on around you. You're more safe when you can hear what's going on around you. And again, the world isn't safe and the world isn't trustworthy, but you can be trustworthy and you can develop your safety through your competency. And while nature might not be safe and great nature might squish you like a bug at any moment, it is not stupid and it is not careless. It is deeply patterned and you have eyes to ear, eyes to see and ears to hear so that you can navigate well and you can learn to move around yourself, to be voluminous, to know what's behind you and what's in front of you, to play the memory and to move into your potential. Pause in the center and switch directions, moving now in the direction of the lunar. This is into the direction of how you handle your heart. It's your embodiment, stir your waters. We're moving against time now. And notice if one of these things is easier for you to play with, it tells you something about yourself. And can you seduce yourself out of your habit? And then pause in the center, take a deep breath in and a long breath out. Take a moment once again to get very structured, shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to hip, opposite shoulder to opposite hip, your two sitting bones, pelvic floor, plugged into the earth. And then gently open your eyes, come off of your block, and we're actually gonna move directly into a hang against the wall. So you're gonna come to face the wall, and about a hand's distance from the wall, walk your feet forward, bend your knees, take the measure so that your two fists are between the arches of your feet, which will align your knees with your armpits, and then nestle up next to the wall so that your upper middle back is in the wall, and then find the fit of your knees coming into your armpits, your thighs driving into your belly and into your chest, and then I want you to lift your feet up and place your hands underneath of your feet so that you're holding onto your heels. And the weight will shift forward into the balls of your feet, so you are in your potential. So you're playing, getting the monkey off of your back, folding over yourself so you can get over yourself. And use the support of the wall. We're going to be here for a little while. As you get more familiar with this practice, the intensity in the quadriceps leaves as you learn to get out of your muscle and into your bones where you have a longevity practice and you are stable. We always forward fold to heal the kidneys, to create connection with ourselves, to turn inward, to have an insight. These forward bends are all about uh, flushing our kidneys. Your joints are all your kidneys. The bend in the knees is helping to facilitate that flush. And then, of course, we're working with releasing the kidney band. So the more that you are pushing down through your feet with that same velocity, lift up through your seat. And here, actually, take your hands out from underneath of your heels and bring them to your lower back where your kidneys are. And then breathe into your own palms.
stand well on your two feet. And let's give the mind something to do here while we're in this practice. So holding for a while here. So find the dead center of your two heels and then draw a line in your mind and in your foot up to the big toe ball of your foot. And then draw a line over the top of your feet to the middle of your lateral arch. So that's the pinky edge of your foot. And then draw another line in your foot up to the baby toe ball of the foot. And then draw a line dead center into the middle of both of your feet with your mind. And then into your inner heels. And then draw a line up dead center of your medial arches. So right where the primary arch of the foot is. And then draw a line around the top of your foot to your outer heels. And then from there, draw a line shooting out through your second toe on both feet. And if you did all of that well, you will find that you are standing quite well on your feet. So lift your inner arches, keep reaching your seat up and breathing into your palms, which are on your kidneys. Good, trace the backs of your legs. Once again, slide your hands underneath of your heels, really using that wall to facilitate the shift forward, finding the back bend in the forward bend by lengthening the front of the spine, seat lifting high. And now wiggle your hands out from under your heels. Keep your knees bent, bring your fingertips to the floor and back step just far enough that you'll be able to take your arms over your head, clasping opposite elbow without hitching, hitting the wall. So keep the measure between the two feet, two fists, bend your knees, take opposite palm to opposite elbow right in line with your ears and lengthen here. So find the frame, right elbow to left shoulder, left elbow to right shoulder, right shoulder to left hip, left shoulder to right hip. And now bend your knees deeper and lift your chest so that you come parallel to the floor, floating into the balls of the feet, seat back as if you were being pulled from the tailbone to the crown of your head. Find a back bend, keep lifting your chest and slowly push all the way up to stand, drive your pubis forward, find a little back bend, and then start to find that fold in the hip crease. So shift your hips back. So your seat's coming way back, bend your knees, pause with your torso parallel to the floor once again. So it's like you are being pulled from tailbone to crown of the head. And then keep folding armpits, make contact with your knees, bow in. Again, initiate with a back bend, hover at 90 degrees, torso parallel to the floor. Keep shifting back as you lift your chest, find the back bend, push all the way up to stand, drive your pubis forward. One more time, lift up and off of your kidneys and then fold in your hip crease, send your seat back, hinge from the hip, pause at 90, pull, pull your elbows apart, wrap your armpits towards your heart and then fold in again. So nice, bring your fingertips down to the floor and then wiggle yourself back up to the wall once again about hands distance apart so that your upper middle back comes into the wall, knees into your armpits for our second hang. And then either hands under your heels or if you're more flexible, you're gonna swing your right arm behind your right calf, right palm to left shin, swing your left arm behind your left calf, left palm to right shin, knees in your armpits and fold forward. And again, same velocity that you are pushing down through your feet Lift your seat, push your knees out into your armpits so you're constantly widening the frame and then organize yourself again and again and again so that you're lifting your arches. You're pushing into big toe ball, pinky ball, both edges of your heels. Knees are spreading out into the armpits, lifting through your seat, pushing down through the ball of the foot and breathe. So nice. It's out of stability in the legs like this that we find the capacity to expand and open and can move upwards into mastery and insight. Again, because everything is predicated on everything else. So if this first fold is off, then all of the rest of the structure of your house is off. 
Release your arms from the hang, plant your hands, and wiggle back away from the wall. We're gonna spin around. Come down to all fours. Very good, and find a frame. So stack your shoulders directly over your wrists, bring your knees directly underneath of your hips. You can always measure this by taking a block to find the 90 degree angle. Your forearm would be flush with the block, your thigh would be flush with the block as well. And eventually the more you do this, that starts to be very, very intuitive. But in the beginning, it's best to actually take the measure. And we don't do things to how we feel, we do them to a measure because our feelings fluctuate way too much. And while they need to be honored and expressed and experienced, they're not what we make decisions on and it's not how we operate in practice because they're first nature and we are moving into our conscious nature. Set the block aside, find that frame, and now flip your right wrist all the way around and flip your left wrist all the way around. Wrists are like little um, necks, and when we work with this part of the body, we actually open up the collarbones, which facilitates opening up our breathing. And now from this position, inhale and round your spine, and exhale and arch your back. In, X, in, X, in, X. Keep your feet anchored to the floor, and start to move forward and back once again. Body is a house, and this is turning on the pilot light in the basement. Body is a vehicle, we're putting the key in the ignition and starting to tend our first fire, at the fire of the endocrine system. In, X, in, X, in, X. Good, take one more breath and then pause in the center. Pull your hands apart, energetically broaden your collarbones, look forward into the future. A little sassy in your seat back behind you. And then flip your right palm forward and flip your left palm forward and avoid shaking out your wrists. Push the floor away. And then wiggle yourself back to the wall so that when you come into downward facing dog, your feet will be pushed up against the wall, finding some very nice stability. Take a shorter downward facing dog so that the entire pose comes back into your legs. A little bend in the knees, and then take your seat super high and super wide. So you are in the balls of your feet, and the shorter the dog is here, and the more you're pushed into the wall, the more you'll find a back bend, and this pose will actually come out of your arms and into your legs, so much that some of you might choose to come up onto your fingertips and really go for that back bend. So seat high, seat wide, ears right in line with your biceps so that you are looking forward, potentiating yourself and your kidneys. Once again, are flushing, wrap your armpits towards your heart and breathe here. Again, everything is predicated upon everything else. So use that wall to find the stability. Keep that little bend in the knees. Keep reaching your seat high. Keep fighting for the back bend. So nice. So from here, take your right hand dead center to the mat, bend your knees, take your left arm across and grab a hold of your right heel and step onto your right hand. Drive your left knee into your left armpit and then hook your chin into your right armpit and turn around yourself 180 degrees. And do your best to keep three and nine o'clock in your hips across your pelvis and instead turn yourself on a spit. Flushing the right kidney. And unhook, unwind, plant your left hand center of the mat, take your right hand across, put it underneath of your left heel, drive your right knee into your right armpit, hook your chin in your left armpit, and spin under yourself 180 degrees. So nice, keep turning, rotating on a spit. 
unwind, bring your hands back, and now find a little bit different dog. Walk your hands forward a little bit now, shooting for a 60 degree triangle. A little bend in the knees still, pushing into the balls of the feet, using the stability of the wall. Look forward at your hands and flip your right wrist all the way around. If this is too much, you can drop to your knees. Good. Opening, a little bend in the knees. Keep lifting your seat high. Flip your right wrist forward. Flip your left wrist all the way around. Keep arching the back, taking your seat up into the air. Flip your left hand back from your dog pose. From here, shift forward into a plank. Stack your shoulders over your wrists and then melt your pubic bone towards the floor and then find a dog once again. And then do that quicker, forward to a plank, lowering into floating up dog and back to down dog. And start to flow through that down dog to up dog, pumping your breath. And then hold your dog once again. Walk your feet back a little bit so that the heel is right on top of the ball of the foot. Walk your hands back, look forward, and lunge your right foot between your hands so that your right knee is right in your armpit and the ball of your foot is stacked directly under your heel. Push into the wall, drive the right hip back, and then unfold from your hip crease, drive your pubis forward and take the frame over your head. Push into the ball of the front foot so much you could lift your hip, your heel up so that you are buoyant and in your lungs. Lungs feed kidneys and expand the frame in all directions. Breathe. and keep reorganizing yourself, putting yourself on a spit, driving into the ball of the front foot, driving into that back heel, which is anchoring you in the past, driving the pubis forward, sinking into that 90 degree angle, expanding the frame from shoulder to elbow, take another breath, and then take your hands down and step back, find the dog, knees bent, seat high. Look forward where you're traveling and lunge your left foot. Your knee is right in your armpit. Your heel is stacked right over the ball of your back foot. And then if you've organized that all very well, you'll be able to stay right in your hip crease and unfold. Driving pubis forward. Again, the weight is in the ball of the foot so that your lungs can open and expand. Wrap your armpits towards your heart. Keep finding the frame. Keep organizing yourself on a spit. One more deep breath, and then take your hands down, and this time, step your right foot forward away from the wall. Finding a hang at the top of the mat, feet hip distance apart, take the measurement, two fists between the arches, little bend in the knees, find the hang again, knees into your elbows. Pardon me, knees into your armpits, not your elbows. Bend your knees deeper. Take your arms forward in front of you so you're parallel to the floor. Drive with a back bend, push all the way up to stand, and release your arms to your side. Good. From here, spin your heels open, in, toes open, and then lower down into malasana, into a squat. Shift your hip side to side, and then take your right arm to the inside of your right knee, take your left arm up to the sky, find a nice spinal rotation, curl open. Switch sides, left arm to the inside of left leg, take your right arm up. 
Lower your right arm back down to the floor. Spin off of your heels and fold forward over your legs once again. Step back into a dog pose. Don't worry about the wall for this one. Come forward to a plank. Flip your wrist, right palm all the way around. Seat up in the air, so not a very traditional plank. And now step your right foot halfway up and then your right foot all the way forward so that you are standing on your right hand. Walk your left foot out to the edge of your mat. Pin your heel down like you would in warrior one. Drive your right knee into your armpit. That's gonna stabilize you. Hug your left hip forward. So you have three and nine o'clock on the pelvis and then turn your chest. Take your left arm up to the sky and then lean back, find the back bend. Flip your palm towards the crown of your head. So the anchor points here is really the knee driving into your right armpit, and then the stability of that back leg, which is like your anchor, lifting your calf away from the floor, turning around yourself like you are on a spit, fight for the back bend, find the arc in the pose, and breathe here, opening up your lungs. So nice, take your left hand down with your wrist flipped, step your left foot forward, stand on your left hand, and then bend your knees so you're standing on both of your hands. Look forward, active in your squat, and then straighten your legs, still looking forward, and then bend your legs. And start to bend and straighten your legs, pumping your kidneys. This is a super nice flush for your lymphatic system, for the kidneys. Look forward, opening up your lungs. My knees are cracking, yours might be too. <laughs> Harmless. Good, and then pause at the bottom. Look forward, standing on your hands, lifting your chest, and lunge your right foot back. Pin your right heel down at the edge of the mat. Drive your left knee into your armpit. Draw your right hip forward. Take your right arm up, lean back, twist, find the back bend. Driving your left knee into your left armpit, rotating around yourself on a spit, your right palm is flipped towards the crown of your head. Good deep breaths. Take your right hand down. Take your foot off of your hand and then find a dog. Walk back to the wall. Once again, get your heels over the balls of your feet. Just one more standing pose. Look forward and lunge your right foot. Really organize yourself here so you're very stable against the wall. Heels pushing into the wall, right knee is in your right armpit. Take your left hand to the outside of your left leg, take your right hand to your hip. Start to rotate your chest and push into the ball of your right foot and from the ball of your foot to your sitting bone, rather than driving your knee back, start to straighten your leg and turn your chest. And your right knee might stay bent, I don't care. Push your knee into your arm. I'm more concerned about you spiraling around yourself like you are on a spit. Push knee into arm, arm into knee, turn your chest. Push into the ball of your right foot rather than jamming the knee back. So it's blossoming open from the right sitting bone to the ball of the foot, ball of the foot to the right sitting bone. Breathe. And now slowly, slowly, re-bend, hands down, step back, down dog, with your heels on the wall, super sassy in your seat. Lunge your left foot. Organize yourself, ball of the foot, right under the heel, left knee in your armpit. Take your right hand to the outside of your left leg. You can even flip your wrist if you want. Turn your chest and then push into the ball of your left foot to start to spin around yourself. Again, working towards 180 degrees. Push into the wall, use the wall for stability. Push your knee into your arm, your arm into your knee. And breathe. Take your left hand back down to the floor. Come off of the wall, feet hip distance apart, fold in. Good. 
wiggle back towards the wall and it doesn't matter if you have a full split i'm certainly not going to be there today take your right leg and wiggle it up the wall and start to wiggle yourself back towards the wall and bend your left knee this is a katona style so i'm more concerned about the bend in the knee than i am about you getting into a full split so you can even come up onto your fingertips here push into the top of the right foot bend your left knee into your chest look forward and find the back bend this is not a traditional standing split left knee is bent lengthen your chest forward breathe And then slowly peel off of the wall, lower your right foot down, pause for a moment, lengthen your arms forward, come up on your fingertips, and then get a little bouncy. And let's take the other side, wiggle that left leg up the wall. Again, bend your right knee so it's moving towards your armpit, towards your chest. Create length in your chest. Fight for the back bend here in this shape. And then open up. This moment isn't so much about flexibility as it is about flushing your kidneys, stretching a liver, tending your fires. Another breath. So good. Lower your left foot back down once again. Shake side to side. And come to a seat on the mat. Extend the legs out in front of you. Bend your knees. Take your feet hip distance apart. Inhale, take your arms up. Get right up on your perineum. Fold down. Knees to armpits, wiggle your butt back, grab onto your heels, and fold in. Keep lengthening your sternum forward, and fit yourself, knees in your armpits, balls of the feet evenly spread towards the wall away from you. So nice. And stay in this pose really 10 to 15 minutes we won't today but you could it's a recharging of your batteries lengthen the front of your spine forward sit up come back onto your block once again i'm going to sit in varasana you sit as you wish sukhasana or varasana but once again, organize yourself. Perineum pointing straight down. Torso lifting and rising. Rest your hands either on your knees or on your heels. And take a moment just to settle the breath. Inhale, fire rising, effort up the back. And grace, water raining down the front. The breath of effort and grace. And stay with that oceanic Ujjayi breath, but we'll breathe around ourselves now from two to eight in the magic square in the body, breath of the seasons. So inhale, spring rising up the front from your left sitting bone to your right eye in a diagonal line. Hear the birds chirping, feel the inception of idea, the inception of spring, and hold at the top of the right the pregnant pause, summer ripening your efforts, and exhale, fall around the back, back to the sitting bone. So breathe around yourself, spring rising, summer ripening, fall, and at the bottom of winter, at your left sitting bone, you have an insight, you tune in, the empty pause of winter. And breathe around yourself.
Very good. And then come back into the center and make fists in front of your collarbones with your elbows out to the side. And inhale and round forward and exhale, arc back. In, ax, in, ax. And apply a bellows breath here. So a forceful inhale and a forceful exhale to a steady measure. And this is you practicing concentrating and radiating so that you don't implode and explode, but instead, again, you are the magician who controls your mind and your body and your breath and your energy output. And we pull inward and take care of ourselves and concentrate our energy so we can radiate back out. In, X, in, X, in, X. And we make fists because we are powerful and capable and we're adding a little bit of punch to life. In, X, in, X, in, X. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pause in the center, take your arms up in the shape of a V, take a deep breath in. Sip in, three more sips. Three more sips. Hold your breath. Exhale, rain your circumstances down around you. Bring your hands to your knees once again. And breathe. Once again, fire and water, effort and grace. And for one final moment, organize yourself very, very well on a spit on the Sutra Akna and the Golden Thread, the Tai Chi, Sushumna, the Gracious Stream. And turn your heart slightly to the right so you're singing the vision of your heart out into the world so you can move forward into possibility. Time is always a revolution. Rub your palms together in front of your face your palms over your eyes, feel the warmth and the fit of your own touch, open your eyes behind your palms, release your palms, and let in the light, and welcome yourself back. Thank you so much for practicing with me. If you want to learn more, you can visit my website, 100-hour, 50-hour, 200-hour, and advanced teacher trainings are all available both online and in select locations around the world. I will see you next time.